Oh no. It's found me. Well, it's not taking me tonight. Ha! Oh. So I've been having nightmares ever since finishing the Sands of Time. So I think it's time to play the next in the trilogy. Prince of Persia, Warrior Within. This was actually the first of the trilogy I played, and it was everything a teenage me wanted from a game. Blood, sweet combat mechanics and animations, metal music, and tits. Needless to say, I'm pretty excited to play this again. This is easily my favourite game I ever had on PS2. So let's see if it was as amazing as I remember. Ugh, even this menu is getting me excited to play this. Just listen to the music. Set seven years after the event of the first game, the prince has been constantly chased by a monster known only as the Dahaka. And after seeking counsel from this old guy, he finds out that whoever unleashes the sands of time must die, and that the Dahaka is the monster set to guard the sands and the timeline. The prince then finds out that he must go to the island of time, where the sands of time were created by the empress of time. Really good at naming things, these guys. So the prince gets a ship and a crew and heads for the island of time in hopes of changing his fate, but he's soon ambushed by another ship with JESUS! That is a big fat ass! Nice. Fat ass then orders her crew to kill everyone on your ship. Tutorial time, and not a lot has actually changed since the last game, apart from the combat mechanics, and thank god they have been improved dramatically. Instead of having the sword and a dagger like in the last game, the prince only has one sword, but you can now take enemy weapons and use them as secondary weapons. And it's always handy to have one because this gives you new combos. But they have a durability. And a really short one at that. But you can always throw it away before it breaks. And steal a new one from an enemy in a really brutal animation. And when I say brutal, I mean it. I mean look at the stuff you can do. You cut guys in half horizontally and vertically. Chop heads off, break backs and straight up throw them off stuff. The prince kills his way onto the other ship and comes face to face with Phalas. And we have our first boss fight of the game, and again, just like the combat, greatly improved from the last game. They now have a life bar, and instead of just standing there letting you beat on them for a few minutes, they actually fight back, and they do not hold back. So after totally kicking her ass, she kicks the princess straight off the ship, and later wakes up on the shores of the very island fat ass was trying to keep him off. She had the prince unarmed, she could have just killed him there. Then again, that probably wouldn't make a good game, killing the main character within his first ten minutes. <sighs> no. The prince lost his sword in a boss fight, so he decides to use his stick as a main weapon. And even after killing some dudes, he still would rather use their weapon, made of actual metal, as a secondary weapon. But after finding Fadas, she sends her men after him, and the prince kills one of them and uses his sword as a primary weapon. Why that guy had a decent weapon? I don't know, but at least the prince has a decent weapon now. And you can actually keep the stick as a secondary weapon for as long as you can. But I threw it away almost instantly. He then chases Fadas to a strange room and she vanishes into a sand vortex, and the prince follows. As it turns out, this sent the prince back in time to when the island wasn't a complete mess of ruins. This also has an effect on the prince's amulet, giving him the power to control time once again. Unfortunately, this means all the defences are working, all of which are the same as what we saw in the last game, and the platforming hasn't changed at all. But that's not a bad thing because it's still some of the best I've ever played. The prince eventually catches up with Fadas and finds her fighting with a woman in red. The prince intervenes and fights Fadas, and after that fight, he kills Fadas and helps, um, I don't know, Big Tits. And tells Big Tits about wanting to meet the Empress of Time. But Big Tits tells him to leave this place and give up on his quest to change his fate. Remember that sand vortex room from earlier? Well, those rooms are actually scattered all around the island, and the prince can use these to travel between the past and the present. Past being drastically different from the present, because in the present, the island is in complete ruins, and in the past, it is in perfect work and order. Problem is for the prince, in the present, the Dahaka is still chasing him around the islands, which leads to my favourite parts of the games, the Dahaka chases. These are the most intense part of the games, and I still find them intense to this day. Even though the prince has the power to control time as well, they still leave me on the edge of my seat. I'm like, come on, you can make it, to the end, we can do this, this is how I've died. And now I'll do it again because I love them so much. God, I agree. Let's talk about the prince for a bit. 
He's a very angry man, like all the time. Just smashing pots with him and cry out in anger. Or maybe this gives the prince the motivation he needs to do what he needs to do. Hmm. I wonder. The prince catches up with Big Tits in what will soon become the Sands of Time, and he tells her of his plan to stop the Sands being created, meaning he never unleashes them in the events of the first game, meaning that the hacker has no need to kill him, thus changing his fate. But to do this, the prince must gain access to the room with the Empress in, and to do this, he is told that he must unlock a door. And to do this, he must turn on the mechanisms in the clock tower and the garden tower. My door needs a key. So after reaching the top of both of these towers and killing loads of dudes, avoiding death at every turn and fighting this guy, the prince can go see the empress. But not before I mention how balls to the wall hard this game actually is. Seriously, in terms of difficulty, this game is a hell of a lot tougher than the last one, and I was only playing a medium. This game is littered with cheap kills and can get very frustrating. But it didn't defeat me. Unlike in the last game where there was a checkpoint around every corner, the checkpoints in this game are every save point. And they are very far and few between. Water still heals you in this, but it is nowhere near as epic as in the last game. And it is incredibly rare to find water that isn't part of a save point. Seriously though, I think I found our 3 or 4 throughout the whole game. The prince keeps seeing this strange guy in black rags all around the island. And he even tries to kill the prince pretty early on in the game. But it's okay, because just before meeting the empress, he gets eaten by the Dehaka. Don't know why I bother mentioning him actually. Oh well. So the prince gets into the room with the empress, and as it turns out, Big Tits is the empress. So the prince must kill her to stop her from creating the sands of time. And so I do. Roll credits! Wait, what? So just as the prince was leaving the island, the Dahaka finds him once more and chases him to the tomb where the prince gives up on life, and accepts that he cannot change his fate, because by killing the empress, he himself created the sands of time, which was the opposite of what he wanted. The prince then finds another way he can alter the timeline and change his fate, but for spoiler's sake, I can't mention it! So after dealing with spoilers, the prince has a second chance to meet the empress, and this time, he knows what he must do. He has to take her back to the present, and then kill her, because even if he does create a sense of time by doing so, it would have happened after the events of the first game, therefore he would have never unleashed them in the first game, therefore the Dehaka will not want him dead. So the prince throws her into one of the time travel vortexes, and battles her in the present and kills her once again. The prince has finally changed his fate and can go home. But wait, there's more. That's the normal ending. You get a real ending which leads into the events of the next game if you get all nine of the health upgrades before fighting the empress. This gives you the water sword, which is the only weapon capable of destroying the Dahaka. So instead of a final battle being against Big Tits, you fight the Dahaka. Both of these battles are equally as tough as each other. So the prince takes Big Tits back home to Babylon, which is where the events of the next game take place from. Even with the high difficulty spike from the last game, this is still an amazing and worthy sequel. We can only hope that the last of the trilogy can give a satisfying end to one of the best sagas in the last gaming generation. Damn it, Lula. Okay, take two.